Hello, I'm gonna tell you about friction. Wow. <laughs> the surface area does not affect the size of the friction. As I pull that, that's two newtons. If I use a larger board, see a mass on the back, that's still two newtons. And the reason for that is because it's a bigger area, so the force is spread out more. So this surface here is not pressed down as much. A factor that will affect the friction is the surface that you're pulling it over. If you've got a nice smooth surface like this mouse mat, ooh, Oh, that's nice. Friction is caused by an interlocking of this surface and this surface. If it interlocks a lot, then you get a high friction. Since that's smooth, there's not much interlocking going on. Two and a half newtons. If I use this surface, which is more rough, ooh, avocado. Wow! I use the same size area of board the same amount of mass on the back of the board. This time, four newtons. That must be because the surfaces are interlocking more. If I use some sandpaper, which is very rough, microscopically, the two surfaces will interlock a lot, and that should create a, an even higher friction. Same size board, same size mass. This time, I'm getting five, six newtons, five and a half, six newtons. Friction is a force which acts when two objects are rubbed together. Friction is what we call a contact force. Friction acts in the opposite direction to movement. So if I'm trying to move this way, friction will be trying to stop me by acting that way. Friction causes objects to heat up. Look how much smog there is. Whoa! And also cause their surfaces to wear away. Car tires could not grip the road without friction. Friction is used in brakes. Wow. Now, friction occurs when two objects rub together. It's a force that acts in the opposite direction of movement. This is the friction, so this would be the tyre, this would be the floor. So the tyre here, the floor here. Microscopically, the surfaces are rough and you get interlocking occurring and that's what's causing the friction. If you can make these two surfaces smooth, then that will decrease the friction. We can put some oil, some kind of liquid in here that will stop the surfaces from rubbing against each other as much, that will reduce the friction and that will make the whole energy transfer more efficient. This is the problem when a car is on a road and the road is wet, it can aquaplane. <laughs> because water gets wedged in between the surface of the wheel and the surface of the floor. Hydroplaning happens when there's too much water on the road for your tires to disperse. A wedge of water forms in front of the tires and the car actually rides up onto that wave, losing contact with the road. The front of the car rises up and makes lots of noise and soon the driver loses the ability to steer. <laughs> Less friction causes the car to slide off the road. Ice is very slippy. It's very smooth and that's why there's less friction. So let's see if we can get the seven missing words in the correct places. I'll just show you which words we've got to use. Okay, so pause the video, have a go with that. 
Okay, so friction is a force which acts when two objects are rubbed together. It acts in the opposite direction to the movement. Friction causes objects to heat up and also causes their surfaces to wear away. Well done. And that's how to take care of business when it comes to friction. Thank you. Frick.